Hello YouTubers, this is Alessandro from Those YG Guys. And in this video will be Those YG Guys' first ever bandless prediction videos. Hooray! And we'll be doing a bandless prediction basically for the September 2012 format. But before I get started with the bandless, my bandless prediction, I'd like to do some quick shout outs um, for three people. Uh, first up, we go goes to Andrew Long YouTubers. I mean, YouTube, sorry. Uh, second up would be CodeZX100, and third but not least would be Great Fails Montana. This is uh, my token appreciation for all three of them for taking my uh, survey. Basically, what what to expect, what would get hit for the next format, and all that. So I say thank you for taking your time and effort for coming up with all these ideas and reasons. So please make sure you check out all three of those channels. I should have links to their channels somewhere like an annotation on this video or down below in the description box, whichever way works best for everyone. So please check them out. All right, so before I get started with my ban list prediction, um, we, need to get, we need to have a good understanding of how Konami's make their ban list and all that. So first up, we'll be talking about Konami's three articles that they posted up um, sometime around late, I think around May, yes, I'm correct. I should have the links to those three articles as well in the description box. Alright, Konami's views and thoughts on making a ban list. To prevent a situation where you feel locked in, where you have to play with certain cards or a certain deck. To keep it so there are choices for what deck you play. Avoid having one dominant deck. To restrict solitaire deck pl and play decks. These are usually first turn combo decks where one duelist plays by him or herself for 15 minutes, shuffling and summoning cards while his or her opponent twindles his or her thumbs. And also, to eliminate cards that are confusing, cause games to stall out, create infinite loops, or can otherwise interfere with tournaments and make them unpleasant. In other words, stacking and all that. Now, continuing on with the, the first article, they talk about Globe Bulb and Spore, and they've broken down to several criteria, which will be important when we think how they hit cards and what's okay and what's not okay. Alright, here's their criteria breakdown. Tuners are okay. Tuners that can be used for any Synchro Monster are okay. Cards you can easily search for or summon from the deck are okay. Reusable cards are okay. Reusable cards with no cost are even okay. Synchro Monster with powerful effects are okay. Synchro Monster that can be summoned using any Synchro material are okay. And of course, they're missing the XYZ monsters, which, of course, that will be a very important thing for the current game right now. But, when all those requirements are met at once, it is not okay. So keep that in mind. Now for the OCG statistics. As TCG players, we need to un have an understanding that not everything that's going on in the TCG will be based on what the ban is going to be. We have to have an understanding on what's going on in the OCG as well. So there's a pie chart that Konami had re released along with a diagram around, I think, Mayish, I think, yeah, or early June, whichever month, whichever those two months, they released that V jump, and they talk about what's going on in their the OCG meta and and their statistics. Unfortunately, I don't have the link to the pie chart, but definitely Best Kids Four Six 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 has a video based on the pie chart. So if you like, I will be more than happy to put a link to the pie chart and to his video, of course. But the other link to the diagram, I, I have it, so no worries about it. Now for the pie chart statistics. 30% Insectors, 12% Heroes, 9% Heretics, 8% Rabbits, 4% Lavos, 4% Dark Worlds, 3% Six Sands, 3% Gadgets, 3% Black Wings, and 24% Other, aka Agents, Raid Keepers, Glider Beasts, so on and so forth. Now to the diagram that I have the link, basically. Um, 
they talk about what are the top six decks in the OCG meta. They are Insectors, Heroes, Heretics, Rabbits, Lavos, and Dark Worlds. Insector is pretty much the most dominant deck that's going on in the OCG meta, of course. It's pretty much the deck basically on its own level and put short work on Six Samurais, Black Wings, and Gadgets. There you have it. Uh, a level below the Insectors are the Big Three decks, which consist of Heretics, Rabbits, and Heroes. Those are like the most widely known decks that have been around underneath the Insectors that you tend to see quite a lot. Then you have Lavos. Lavos have a good matchup against Insectors, but it loses to the big three. Then you have the Dark World, which has a good, great matchup against the big three, but it loses to the Insectors. So, yeah. So that's enough of the OCG statistics and information. Now, to get started with the ban list. Well, basically, my predictions for the ban list. Alright, so how I'm going to do things is I'm going to be doing section by section, list all the cards that are in that particular section, and then I'll be saying my reasons for, okay, so for example, like for Forbidden, it'll be this card, this card, this card, this card, and now I'll go back to this card is banned because of blah, 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 because of that. So that's how I'm going to go. So hopefully you guys will follow along. And also, heads up, knowing I know the video is very long, so I apologize. But I'm trying to be very descriptive and give me my reason why I think these cards deserve these places. So if you don't agree or disagree, I mean, if you don't agree or agree with my points, please comment down below. Please don't say, like, oh, this list sucks because of, I mean, this list sucks. And without telling me anything, why do you think this list sucks? So please, 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 comment down below. So without further ado, let's get started. Forbidden, I put Future Fusion, Wind-Up Hunter, Black Ops Soldier Envoy Beginning, and Card Destruction. Future Fusion, this card is just, this card is just so broken in so many ways. It sets up your graveyard, which is bad, very bad. And it kind of like, it just sets, a, sets up your place. And it's bad. Very bad. So people have been saying like, oh, ban five-headed dragon. That will solve everything. No. No. In case you haven't noticed, there are other decks that can abuse future fusion. That's not good. That's not good at all. Dragons are not the only one that can use future fusion. Let's be clear. Back in when Power of the Duelist was released, Cyber Dragons were using Future Fusion. It's like, okay, uh, Future Fusion. Okay, I reveal Chimera Tech Over Dragon. Dump a bunch of machines. Okay, Overload Fusion. Bring out Chimera Tech Over... I mean, Over Dragon, yes. And attack for game. Ta-da! Okay. If you, that's not good enough, later on, Gadgets. They pick up Future Fusion. Oh, okay. Uh, future Fusion. Chimera Tech Over Dragon. Da-da-da-da-da-da. Overload Fusion. Chimera Tech. Tech. Boom. Then Chaos Dragons, yeah, 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 we, we know that story. But it's not just Chaos Dragons as well. Heroes can also do Future Fusion plays. So they are, okay, Future Fusion. Uh, Elemental Hero, Eskuri Dao, you know the Dark Attribute Hero that's been released today? Actually, not today, this month. So, okay, I reveal a hero and a Dark Attribute Hero, I mean, a Dark Attribute such as Black Wings the Elite. Okay, I said it. Okay. I made Black Wings of Rose Elite's effect. Okay, bouncing Future Fusion back to my hand. Special Summon of Rose, take 400 points of damage. Ouch. Okay, play another Future Fusion. Okay, uh, this time a different attribute heroes. Okay, da da da. You're setting up your graveyard place. You're thinning out your deck so it increases your possibility for drawing the cards that you need. That's bad. There's a reason why they ban Future Fusion. I mean, not Fusion. Painful Choice and Limit Foolish Burial. So. That's why I think it should be banned. And it also ruins future card designs. Imagine they make an, an insect fusion monster. Who knows what Konami will think of. And like, okay, future fusion. Uh, okay, I'm going to dump a bunch of insect hornets and ladybugs. 
How in the world that's even fair? Seriously. It has to go. End discussion. No more five-headed dragon talk. Plus, five-headed dragon is going to be in the legendary collection three. I mean, what kind of dummies would Konami would do? Seriously. So, end of story. Wind up hunter. You guys pretty much know. Wind ups are pretty much, aka, the first turn solitaire like deck. Yeah, it's too good for it to be turn one. It makes plays very unpleasant. Even though Konami doesn't really see them as a big threat, but if you go to the second article, they did talk about Wind Up Hunter, and it's like, hmm, maybe we should hit it, or we are not too sure. But after the recent nationals, like in South America, North America, and Europe, yeah, Wind Ups is now on the danger zone. But I think Wind Up Hunter banning it will be just just makes wine no makes everyone happy. Just ban Hunter, then wind up players will be happy. They'll just okay, we'll just go the, this other direction. It won't kill wind up decks. It's just gonna take them to a new direction. I've been asking people, okay, what's the best wind up monster? Oh okay, wind up rabbit. Okay. Seriously, what do you see wind up hunter outside of the loop? My point is exactly. It's pretty, pretty much for the loop and just ruin your opponent's hand. End of story. Oh, and also, the LCG will be getting Tour Guide, Wind Up Shark, and Wind Up Rabbit. And they already have Diagosto Emerald, so imagine how that will go. Alright, Blacklist Soldier Envoy beginning. I was considering putting Monster Born on the ban list, but the problem is, Monster Born have been confirmed to be the Legendary Collection 3. Nothing, it won't get banned, but that kind of decreases his possibility of getting hit. But, in order to, well, that eliminate one possible way to get rid of the, a perfect top deck card, so might as well focus on the other perfect top deck card. That's BLS. You know who, um, you know the reasons why. Awesome top deck card, an extra boss monster, has an OTK potential, a lot of cards work well with him. Has to go. Bye. Um, card destruction. A lot of people will argue about this one, but here's my reason why I think card destruction will get hit. At first, I was debating on, okay, well, what would be a great way to hit Dark Worlds? Because, you know, Dark Worlds probably will get hit. Because, I have, as a biology major, I have a really interesting hypothesis depending on how Konami will do things. When Agents won Worlds in 2011, they, Konami dragged the deck another format. They didn't hit it straight up in September 2011, they hit it in March 2012. So they dragged it another format. When they released Dark Worlds, they didn't hit Dark Worlds, they dragged it into another format. So, my hypothesis is they're going to hit Dark Worlds, they might not going to hit hard with Dragons. Sorry guys for if you're hoping to see dragons get hit. And uh, don't get don't count your blessings. So but if they do hit dragons and dark worlds or some other phenomenon or just hit dragons and not hit dark worlds, then my hypothesis will be discarded and I'll just have to reforge it in some other way. But card destruction. I was debating on like, for how to hit Dark Worlds, like, whether it's going to be, like, Graffa or Snow. Graffa, it'll be the same story on, like, why not hit Master Appearance and all that, even though they didn't hit Master Appearance, so. Snow. Dark Worlds have a little bit of a, uh, this, this has a problems with holding consistency-wise, and I think that could be a, an issue. Well, I'm not saying that Dark Worlds is inconsistent 100%, but it's not consistent 100% either, so it's like, eh. But card destruction, it ruined game setup plans. It pretty much, uh, it fluctuate power level cards for your opponent's hand. Of course, the net card, net of cards will be, be exactly neutralized, so the loss and the gain will be, eh. But the power level will be, eh. Plus, Dark World players, if they drop card destruction, it's just pretty much an auto win button. It's like you'd be plusing like 
crazy. So banning card destruction will be will be good for everyone. And plus, for Dark Worlds, it'll be like, oh, what do we do now? Well, you can always focus on Fable Raven. They all they always make Fable Raven, so might as well take a look into that card. Excuse me for a minute. Limited. I have Insector Hornet, Ultimate Offering, Livier to Sea Dragon, Evolzer Logia, E Emergency Call, Mystical Space Typhoon, One Day of Peace. And for dragons, we'll we'll get down to that little story. Insector Hornet. Um, at first I put Dragonfly to one, but then I then after talking to certain people, then I was like, mm, okay, maybe I need to change things out. I'll, I do hit Dragonfly as well. I put Dragonfly to two, just to lower its consistency and not like to hope for a top deck card and all that stuff. But Insector Hornet is the card that pops things. It's very nuisance. And funny thing is, I don't think Konami has this. Didn't mean to make Zet Caliber to be an OTK potential card, because the OCG it took them until like May to realize, oh my God, Zet Caliber, there's an OTK potential with Zet Caliber, and they have insectors longer than we do. Is there something wrong with that sign? Uh. Yeah. So, Eliminating Hornet will also open up for Ladybug plays and all that. So, so take Insectors to a new direction for XYZ spamming instead of stupid X, I mean, Insectors pop, 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 and OTK. Ultimate Offering. This card just caused problematic game designs. It gives you an extra normal summon and all that. Works great with gadgets. Gadgets are getting all some really good rank 4 monsters coming up in the OCG so and there'll be other reason why he also hit ultimate offering but it's now it's, it should have been stay at 1 for a good reason instead I don't know why they bump it up Levier to Sea Dragon I decided not to well people will say like oh this car is broken and all that yeah it is it has a really extremely powerful effect but it's not like ruining game mechanics. If we're talking about ruining game mechanics, then I'll be more than happy to talk about Gaia Dragon the Thunder Charger. But Mega Capital G already talked about that, so I will not re re narrate that part. But I feel like there are decks that need Livier outside Dino Rabbits. So I feel like putting to one would be would be best for both worlds. So we'll go with that. Evolve Zarlagia. I know Evolve players will be very upset and all that. But the reason why I put Lagia, well, before that, I also put Rabbit to 2. But the reason why I put Lagia to 1 is that even if Rabbit's at 2, and sometimes that might decrease the, the chances of having the opening hand or so, Dino Rabbit players are going to be stuck with the same play. They'll be like, oh, Rabbit, okay, Rabbit, 2 Dinos. Exceed for Lagia. They'll be, they'll be keep hovering over Lagia nonstop. So, so in order to break that, we had to put Lagia to one. Sorry, Evolve players who don't like it, but there's always the, the other boss monster, Evolves are sold out. You might as well focus on that build. Just saying. Also, when when Konami talked about Legendary Six Samurai Shien and all that, having more than one Shien will just be very unpleasant for the game and all that kind of stuff. So I think it will make sense why to hit Evolves or Lagia. Even though Lagia and Shien are not definitely not one of the same cards, but it's, if Stalin Jump is that one, then that's probably the best way to ex explain. E emergency call. Konami has a way of hitting cards that makes the deck consistent. Hero decks they have like five well, they have multiple ways to make things consistent, but the most obvious ones in that you'll see in a lot of hero decks be a Stratos, three call E calls and reinforcement of the army. So putting E call to one will will slow the deck down a bit, but still be playable a bit. 
Uh, mystical Space Typhoon. Okay, this car caused a lot of problems and needs to put it to a stop. So, can I make other cards such as Twister, Dust Tornado, Night Beam? So, I think it's best to put Mystical Space Typhoon to one and let the other Spell and Trap Hate Remove cards to, to come in and join in the meta. So, it's time to make room for those old cards that no one's paying much attention to. One Day of Peace. Why in the world did Konami made that card? If you know what, if you have no idea what One Day Peace is, it's pretty much a spell card where each player draws one card and neither player takes damage until the end of the opponent's next turn. Why? That just boosts up Final Countdown decks, Exodia decks, and Chainburn deck. Why can I? Why did you make that kind of a card design? Do I need to go? Ex do I need? Do I need to explain even further? Let's hope not. Now for the dragons. Uh, I initially put Red Eyes Darkness Mel Dragon to one, but then with the announcement with Gustav Max coming out. Uh, I kind of become a bit hesitant, so I'm not too sure to put Red Eyes to 1, 2, or leave it at 3. Or I was thinking of maybe hit Heretic Dragon King of a Tomb. But, like I said earlier, don't expect too much of a hit for Dragon, so. So if they do hit, Dragon's hard. Hooray for everyone. If not, told you so. All right, now on to the semi-limited list. I have Insect of Dragonfly, Tour Guy from the Underworld, Rescue Rabbit, The Age of Mystery Earth, Black Whirlwind, Final Countdown, Book of Moon, and McKinley. Insect of Dragonfly, I just mentioned earlier, just put it to, just leave the Ladybug plays alive, and just lower the consistency or, or the luck factor of top decking a, a Insect of Dragonfly. Torga from the Underworld. I, this card has already reached to staple level and it's like at 3. Remember the plant engine where they talked about in the first article where pretty much where before a deck was constructed you just start with the plant engine. Dandelion, Spore, Glow Bulb, and Lone Fire Blossom. Then you build the deck from ground up. So this is no different. Three Torgas and one Singin. Ground up. So people were saying well ban Singin. Well, the problem is, when they talk about Dandelion, why they didn't hit Dandelion, they said they stated, we don't want to hit Dandelion because it will hurt the vers its versatility to fun decks. Now, if we look back to fun decks, fun decks don't have their own searcher. That's the problem. They need to turn their heads to generic searchers. And pretty much, who is their generic searcher? Sangin. So, if they hit Sengen, then most likely they'll have to bring back Witch of the Black Force. And people will be saying, well, oh, Witch of the Black Force will help Chaos Dragons. Well, that's true. But like my friend Winky would once say, well, pick your poison. Sengen or Witch? But Torghead 2 will lower the consistency of the rank 3 plays. And either you go with a 2 Torghead and 1 Sengen. And probably find a, a filler if you want to go with that way, or who knows. But obviously, Tori has already reached his staple level and it needs to be dealt with. Rescue Rabbit 2 2. Um, this car is a bit more balanced version in a way when compared with the Rescue Cat. It, it's a support for vanilla monsters, which is this is good. You don't see too many support for vanilla monsters. Excuse me for one second. And I think putting Rabbit to two will be fair enough. And like I mentioned earlier, with Evolves are logged up to one, that'll give a shine to all the other XC monsters that'll have a chance to to shine the meta under the rabbit. So I think it will help out a bit. 
So, leaving Rabbit 2 to 2 would be a good idea. Agent of Mystery Earth. I don't know why they hit... I don't know why Konami hit that deck so hard, but I understand because of the OCG and all that. Like, TG agents have been very dominant in the OCG. We know that story. But, I think it was just collateral damage when they just banned Trishula and put Striker and Earth to 1. It was just collateral damage. I was considering putting Striker to 2, I meant to 1, to 2, sorry, I'm having a massive brain fart there, to 2 as well, or maybe instead of Earth, Striker to 2, but then there's a, the issue is, from the last format of the September 2011, there have been decks that have been utilizing the TG engine, where they'll be running 3 Warwolves, 2 Strikers, like, if you don't believe me, um, I remember one deck that top in the tournament in Strike OCG. It was a Dragoonie deck that ran three Warwolves and two Strikers, and I just, just flipped out of my mind. I was like, what? So, yeah, that's how, how crazy things have become. But I feel like putting Earth to 2 will help deck diversity and all that, so... And agents really do need a bit of a support. They're not doing a whole lot. Even though they do top a few things in the, the recent... Well, not the recent, but in this format. But still, Konami is not seeing them as a big deck. I think it's time for them to help them a bit. Like they did with Six Sense. Black Whirlwind. New products for, Blackwing car, for the Blackwing deck will be coming out. They're releasing... So far, three new cards. Blackwing Damascus, the Polar Knight. Blackwing Gladius, the Midnight Sun. And Blackwing Bram, the Shining Star, which is this new Synchro Monster. So, in order to support Blackwings, because I noticed that not many of the Blackwing players in the OCG are using the new cards. So, in order to promote their products and all that, I think Black Whirlwind will be a good choice. People will say, well, why not put Kalutu 2 instead of Whirlwind? Well, the thing is, Damascus, the Polar Knight, is pretty much the new Kalut. It only works during your opponent's battle phase. It gives all your Blackwing monster by 100 attack points. So it's like, well, that doesn't sound too good. Yeah, but if you bring Kalut to 2, no one's going to pay much attention to Damascus. See my point? Then people will talk about, well, well, Gale. Uh, uh, yeah, it can, it can help Blackwings a bit, but it's not going to help promoting the new products, so see what I'm getting at. So I think Black Whirlwind will be a great way to help Black Wings and it's time to give Black Wings a break for once in this ban list. And if you guys are still saying like, oh Black Wings are gonna be so P and Black Whirlwind is pretty much the gateway of six. If you start saying that, I'll be more than happy to put a link down below. Well actually take you to a link to a video where make Capital G Talking about that Black Whirlwind and Gateway of Six are not in the same world. They're two, like on two different planets, pretty much. And it's also another reason why I put Ultimate Offering into one as well. So, no need for an abuse and all that. And it's funny when I, when I looked in the internet when people said, Oh, Black Wings are going to be so OP, we help them. But the funny thing is... They're helping Six Sands or stuff like, oh, they don't pay much attention about Six Sands. And in case you haven't noticed, guys, Six Samurais are coming back with Burning Vengeance. They're coming back next format, regardless of whether you guys like it or not. They are coming back. So, see if there's something wrong with the picture there? There. My point is exactly. Final Countdown. The deck is stupid. That's all I have to say. Um, lowering the, the number of copies of Final Countdown will also lower the chances for having Final Countdown in early gameplays. So if you don't get to your Final Countdown early enough, you pretty much are, it's pretty much game over. That's all I have to say. And the deck doesn't have to be Tier 1 in order to get hit. As long as it showed up in tournament reports, it's more than enough for Konami to say, okay, we need to hit that deck because it's getting really stupid. Just like how they did with Magical Explosion deck and all that. Book of Moon. Uh, in Konami's second article, 
they talked about Book of Mormon, but they weren't sure. Was like, mm, should we put a two? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, maybe we put one and stuff. But I think leaving it at putting it to two will be very helpful. Uh, one was it was decent, but it's just not extremely, extremely good. But two would be like so helpful. Three would be overkill, of course. Now, don't get me wrong. Book of Moon is a very good card, but I think having more than one would be so much helpful in the format. That's pretty much after when how much this format has become, pretty much. And finally, Rekindling. I put that card to two. People, this is what bothers me. A lot of people are considering, oh, Lavals are tier two and all that. In case you haven't noticed, guys, lavas are good. Do not underestimate them. They can be a force to be reckoned with. The fact that Rekindling says, okay, you can special summon as many fire attribute monsters with 200 or less defense. Just as many as from your graveyard to the field. That's not good. It's kind of like Monster Reborn on cocaine in some way. So... I'm not putting it down to one because that would hurt the sales for levels in the TCG because we don't have all the the flat I mean level monsters available in the TCG. So this is gonna quell a bit in the OCG, but while helping out what's going on in the sales in the TCG. Also, Kanai wants to keep a dichotomy for fire versus water. Since in the next one we're getting a lot of water cards, so That'd be kind of cool. It would be a nice break from light and dark for I don't know how long have they been doing that. I think it's one, one too many times they've been doing it. So I think it's time to give a, a this would be a nice change for once. And finally, the unlimited section. Only got three cards so far. Uh, Summer Monk, Destiny Hero Malicious, and Primal Seed. Summer Monk, this card will be helpful for a rank 4 XC monster, especially when the new Prophecy Archetype will come in, since they're running lots of spell cards. Hooray! Because that's what you need to activate Summer Monk's effect. Ditch a spell, search for a level 4 monster, boom. XC, rank 4. Ta-da! Konai likes to support XC! Hooray! And no one's been using Summer Monk that often, so I think it's it's safe to say like okay, let's let's untie the screws on on Summer Monk. Destiny Hero Malicious. Pretty much in my view, it's pretty much the watered down version of Reborn Tengu. It's not doing a whole lot. I mean no one's using utilizing the not a whole lot of people actually, utilizing the Destiny Hero engine that often. And Destiny Hero Malicious can help not only Synchro plays, but also your XE plays for rank 6 monsters. So, they need support for XE monsters, so why not? But, I was I was thinking about putting Destiny Draw to 3 as well, but then I was like, ooh. I'm thinking about, let's not, because maybe the Exodia deck will turn to like, hey, come over here. So, let's, let's avoid the Destiny Draw for now. Uh, Primal C, with BLS ban, why keep it at 1? And then the rest of the unlimited section will be the re pretty much will rest in Konami's hands. Okay, now finally, the unknown future. Um, there's some stuff that, that have been going on in the meta, some talk been going around. Here are my thoughts. They've been talking about effect veilers. There, there could be a possibility that effect veiler could get hit in the way, and there could be a possibility where effect veiler could not get hit. But let's keep in mind, effect veiler, even though it's a very a nuisance of a card, is kind of like the, your saving grace card from being OTK by your opponent or stuff, something like that. So I don't know. It's, it can go either or, but. I think it's very important to keep OTK in check because we don't want to give OTK decks too much power. Uh, Demok, there have been some rumors going around that Demok will get banned. 
because it's being released in the Epic Dawn Battle Pack. Okay, first of all, how do you know a Demog will be the one that get unbanned? In case you haven't noticed, in the Epic Dawn Battle Pack, there are also other banned cards. How do you know they're not going to pick the other cards if they are going to unban something? Second of all, Demog, through my, through my experience of playing this game over 10 years, Demog is just too broken. It's about, I don't know, a degree of like whether it's more broken or less broken than BLS, but it's about, but still, it's broken. There's too many cards that work well with the card. It it'll be it'll be too amazing in a prophecy deck. Don't get me started with that one. That's another story to talk about. And it's just not only that. Ever since Demog came in. It, it opens up to a consistency of OTK and FTK decks. That's not good. So, in my personal opinion, Demog should stay where he is right now. So, stay for Ben and the story for that one. And finally, for the unknown future, hopefully Konami will help a couple of decks out a bit. First of all, it will be Gladiator Bees. Like, in the second article, they talk about Black Gladiator Bees Bestiary, and it was like, hmm, well, maybe we should help Bestiary, like, bump it up, like, a couple, like, an extra copy of it in the deck. That'll help Gladiator Bees a bit, but the problem is, then, decks that run Bestiary, just for the Gizarra spam and all that, that's where the problem comes, so hopefully Konami will come up with some way to help Gladiator Bees. And the other deck, which is probably the biggest one that needs help, is Plants. I, in my opinion, I never play against Plants. I, I don't have a certain hatred towards them, but I think what they did to Plant was just harsh. It was absolutely harsh. I, in my opinion, I hope they help Plant deck so they can get back on its roots and fight back or at least put up a, a challenge. So... We'll just hope for the best for plants and all that other stuff. So, what do you guys think about this video? Do you like it? Do you think the video is too long? I mean, is it so? Please comment down and I'll try to make it better than in future times. I apologize for the video for being so long. So, please, 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 please check out those three channels that I mentioned for my shoutouts. Andrew Long YouTubes, CodesX100, and Greatfells Montana. And... That's pretty much all I have to say for in this video. I'm Alessandro, your host, and I will see you guys later. See you later. Bye.